Welcome to This Week in Discovery News. I'm Trace, and Pambassadors are real. Do you want to be one? You probably don't want to be a squid that eats poop. And if neither of those are your cup of tea, you can always be the guy that makes mosaics from Hubble images. The scientific name for this squid is Vampiroteuthius infernalis, which translates to the vampire squid from hell. <laughs> It gets its fantastic name from the Count Dracula cloak-like web between its tentacles. But sorry, it doesn't eat other squid and it doesn't eat other animals. In fact, it doesn't have a lot to do with vampires. It doesn't even live for hundreds of years and still not get sick of silly teenage drama. What it does eat is poo and other marine waste and it envelops it in globs of mucus. It's not really a vampire, it's more like a cesspool squid. Blah. The vampire squid is one of Earth's living fossils, which means it survived all of the major extinction events and is more or less unchanged for millions of years. That squid's so old, it swam uphill both ways to get to school. This guy has puzzled scientists for years, and not just because of the odd diet, but also those two dangling appendages that are long and thread-like and don't have anything to do with penises. Scientists just figured out their purpose. What they do is they pick up food as the squid swims, and then they're pulled back in where they get mucus from the suckers before they're ingested. <laughs> Check out discoverynews.com slash vampire squid for all the cephalopod facts. Now we travel from the nether world to a native son of the Netherlands. This story makes me feel like I need a cooler hobby. Harvard astronomer Alex Parker was outside trying to watch the stars, but it got cloudy. So while he was bored, he made this. Right? Ugh. In talking with Parker, Discovery News learned that he was originally from a town north of Seattle, Washington, an area known for its cloudy nights, but somehow he still became an avid astronomer. We also learned that he used special software to create the mosaic, and while he had the original inspiration, the software did all the piecing together. Which is good, because that would take a long time. Parker also makes videos to show during his lectures, and he sets them to music, sort of. Interestingly, he uses the planets and the stars to set the musical notes for him based on their speeds and relative intensities. That is pretty darn cool. It's like the music of the gods, or the music of the planets. Land on discoverynews.com slash Van Hubble to see a bigger image of the mosaic and the videos that he makes. We're done with space for the day, but let's move on to something cuter. How do you feel about pandas? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's so cute! <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The Chengdu Panda Base is a breeding facility for pandas and other rare animals. How do you feel about taking care of pandas? Are you sitting down? Because they're looking for some pambassadors. <laughs> It's like a dream job. When selected, the three Chengdu Pambassadors will hold their position for one year and get to participate in the Global Panda Conservation Tour. If you want to be considered to be a Pambassador, go to their Facebook page, which we've put here on the screen. Once you're there, you can upload a photo or a video of why you want to be a Pambassador, and the more likes or hugs you get, the better chances you'll have. From the submissions, 24 finalists will be selected to come to Washington, D.C. for another competition. There are only 1,600 pandas left in the wild and only a few hundred in captivity, so every panda birth is considered precious. While the National Zoo's baby panda died last week, the San Diego Zoo had a successful birth and the panda cub is doing just fine. The best thing we can do for pandas is to get them back into the wild and then protect those habitats so they can breed for themselves. Pandas didn't evolve to live behind glass. For all of our panda stuff, visit Discover discoverynews.com slash panda, and for a link to the Facebook page of the Chengdu Pambassador program, check out the description below. That's all for this week. If you want more of our coverage, make sure that you like us on Facebook, you follow us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. You can also subscribe to our Discovery Daily Newsletter. Links to all of those and subscription options are at discoverynews.com. Keep commenting and tweeting. I see them all, and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Vampirothi... <sighs> Vampiro to scuff. To scuff a panda. <laughs> I met a cat named Pixel once. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, so cute. Aw. Cephalod. Cephalopod. <laughs> I'll be like, oh my god! Vampiro Teutheus. <laughs> that was a good one.